There is a brand new update revealing just how many songs are uploaded to music streaming services daily, and we're gonna talk about it in today's video. What's up guys, this is Omari with No Nonsense Music Marketing, the number one place for music business and industry advice online. If you are not subscribed already and you're a serious musician, click the subscribe button now, hit that notification bell so you can get updates on every new video that we drop. So it just so happened last week that there was a milestone pass for streaming services like Spotify, Apple Music, so on and so forth. Over 100,000 tracks are now being uploaded each day to streaming services. So this uh, article dropped by Music Business Worldwide uh, that there are there's essentially an endless amount of music, not only on the platforms, but being added every single day. So these figures were confirmed by uh, Universal Music Group CEO and chairman, um, as well as they were at uh, the Music Matters Conference in Singapore just last month. Um, they Their argument was that um, record companies with their ability to market, promote, and develop artists are only becoming more critical to musicians' careers. Arguable, but um, you know we'll, we'll go into that. So it is true that if you don't know how to market yourself, you do need somebody to help. Now, obviously you can have a independent service such as us who does the Spotify playlist thing, the YouTube promotion, the Instagram ads management, the Facebook ads management, the TikTok influencer uh, promotion. We do all of that and you don't have to sign away your rights, uh, but you do need to be a little bit more organized, meaning that you know you have the ambition to go out and get your own website built you have the ambition to uh, build out your products and services, like actually have a sales funnel so that you can make your money back. You have to be more ambitious in booking your own shows. It's very possible. The main problem is that people don't do all the steps I just said. They just wanna buy one Spotify promotion and think that's gonna be enough uh, for me to make my money back on this uh, just through the streaming revenue. It doesn't happen like that. The streaming revenue, that would be like us putting a Google ad on our website, putting the Google ad banners on our website and then running paid traffic to the website and thinking that the Google ads revenue is gonna pay for our paid traffic. That doesn't, that doesn't compute. That's not in a business, that's a wish. You're, you're wishing that that revenue coming from the streaming services is going to equal the amount you put out for a promotion. It doesn't work that way for any business. That's just like if you throw an ad on TV, then you know what I put out is just going to magically come back to me. No, you have to have a plan of how that's going to come back, and it's usually through a business structure, through a sales funnel. Uh, so you want people to sign up for your email list. You want them to sign up for your text message list. You want them to visit your website so that they can get put through a sequence where they get to know you and then you sell them products or services or have them out to shows, uh, have more sponsorships. Use all that influence to build your business versus just trying to get streaming revenue. So even the major labels, like they, they do a good job of old school advertising. They're still learning a lot of the new school advertising. What they do is just sign the people who do know, um, like TikTok or Instagram or uh, Google. They just sign the artists who already know that so that they don't necessarily have to have as many people internally who do that. Um, but they, they still do have people obviously who work on that. But we've, we've gone over how their ads usually aren't as good as other people's ads such as small businesses or digital marketers are really good to study on how to make good ads for small businesses such as artists. Uh, but uh, half of his point is true that you do need, uh, either you need to learn it yourself or you, you need to hire somebody to do it. Don't just spend money on trying to run your own Facebook ads or trying to run your own Instagram ads. And then you're wondering why this doesn't work. I've, you know, people have actually said Facebook ads don't work. Well, no, you just don't know how to run the ads. So either get somebody who does know how to run the ads like us to run them for you, or you need to go take a course, look at a bunch of YouTube videos, learning how to do it properly yourself. 
so the other thing that I wanted to touch on, 100,000 songs per day, a lot of purists, like artists who are purists, aren't going to like this next statement, but it needs to be said. Songs should be shorter. You you likely want, like, if you can get it under three minutes, under, like, in that two-minute area uh, for the song, then that's going to be your best bet in this new music economy. Like, a two-minute song. Obviously, it, once you get bigger, then you can make longer songs. But when you're smaller and you're trying to play this game of, this is a brand new game. This is not 1990 anymore. You want your song to be consumed a lot. So you kind of want to leave them wanting at the end of the song. If the song is only two minutes, then that still leaves them wanting for other songs or to repeat your song more. Last I checked, a song that's two minutes gets page out just as much as a song that's four minutes or one that's like seven minutes. So I, as a small time artist, I would, I would not release a song that's seven minutes. I would cut that down to two minutes and then, you know, you can make it into another song, like chop up your content. Just like you, we take this long form video of YouTube and chop it up and put it everywhere else. Same idea. Take your longer songs and try to chop them up and a smaller song, make shorter songs, do what you got to do to get it down to like the two minute area. Uh, you know, if you want to push it and get it towards three minutes, you can do that, but really you need to pump out content. Um, if there's a hundred thousand songs going out per day and you're a new artist and you're trying to get put on, trying to gain your fan base and you want to get paid more from the streaming, Every dollar does count, especially when you're growing your business as a small business. So if you can take that four minute song, turn it into two, two minute songs, and then you're getting paid double now for the same listening time. Uh, that is, that's, that's what you have to do. You don't have to do that, but that's highly advisable, um, to play this game smartly. Uh, so have more releases that allows you to have more consistent release schedule. You don't have to, you know, make every song four minutes. You can have a consistent release schedule and every song is two minutes. You don't have to write as much whenever every song is two minutes uh, so that you can be using your time wisely and efficiently. Uh, additionally, we've said this before, but we've, we've said that you should have at least one release every, ideally it'd be every month or even every two weeks. If you can pull off one release per week, uh, you know, we'll shout out Kid Travis again. Uh, he, last we checked, he was releasing a song every single week. You guys can go look on his Spotify. Uh, he's been making a lot of traction because he just keeps releasing a song every single week. So you stay on top of people's mind. If they follow you on Spotify, you're dropping in their release radar. And then that release radar algorithm is helping boost the Discover Weekly and the radio playlist. So that way... Um, but you know, we don't want you to, to just use the paid promotion and not take advantage of the, the organic promotion as well. So a lot of times you just use the paid promotion to get to the organic. Uh, that's what we do. That's what, you know, obviously we still do some paid ads, but ideally you want your business to be sustainable enough to a point that you can just throw this amount of dollars into it and you'll know that you'll start to get some organic traffic after it. Uh, so all those together that goes into your release schedule for 2023 and beyond shorter content, faster release schedules. Uh, again, if you're a purist, I can already hear the objections about this. You know, people, people should want to listen to this full piece of art, so on and so forth. Look, it, I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm just not saying the listener is also wrong for enjoying this two minute song perfectly just as well as they would a four minute song. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, the other question that, uh, other section I wanted to point out, because I just thought it was funny. Uh, music business worldwide. At the end of this article, I don't know who wrote this, um, but sometimes the statements these people say, is just their head is so far up their butt that it just like, it just it kind of makes me giggle, right? It makes me laugh. So at the end of this article, it says that we all surely... Uh, live in hope that companies like Spotify and Apple Music are building 
uh, or buying sophisticated tech that prevents dangerous and or hateful content ever reaching the ears of young, I can't even get through it, young users. So they actually just said this statement and like they they don't look at the content that's on some of the most popular Spotify playlists that that are that are out there. We've already gone through the lyrics content that's on uh, playlists like Rap Caviar, uh, the death metal playlist, things like that. Uh, somehow that slipped through their definition of dangerous and or hateful content. Um, th- th- so that's that's just kind of like when you get into, th- I guess, th- the world of being woke, so to speak, quote unquote, then you just don't see that as being dangerous or hateful. They would mostly just be talking about, you know, one type of content that they deem dangerous or hateful versus all the types of content. So whenever you're reading these articles, I say that to say whenever you're reading these articles, Look at the terms, take things with a grain of salt, because a lot of marketing is psychology. So when you can look at how other people use psychology, or they might not even be trying to do that. They just may be so so programmed into that train of thought that they didn't even think about that. Uh, so whenever you're doing your marketing, whenever you're going through, how do I make this ad good? How do I get people to think about this? How do I not control people's thinking, but how do I influence them in a way that's going to, you know, get them to obviously pay attention to what I'm trying to do. Paying attention to word use like this is one way you can start to train your brain to recognize, okay, they said this, but they didn't even consider that. uh, And it gets into your critical thinking. And that way you'll be able to think faster and more efficiently whenever you're doing your marketing. All right. So that's one advanced tip for y'all. Uh, but if you found this content helpful, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. If you're a serious musician and you want to do this full time, this video was just one example of the many videos we dropped. This one was very key in your release strategy. So you want to see, you'll, you saw why you want to subscribe to this channel, hit that notification bell and hit that like button and we'll catch you in the next video.